Hi, today we're going to take a look at moving a 3D model from Blender into Storyboard Designer. Right now we're in Blender and we have this wonderful 3D crank software logo. And if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that it's in the middle of this three-dimensional space. Um, there's our X, Y, Z axis. And if you look at the numbers up here at location, X, Y, Z, it just confirms that it's at zero, which is the center. Um, now, within that space, the 3D model is oriented uh, with these numbers here, the rotation. X is set to 90, Y and Z are 0. Well, why is X 90 and the other is 0? I'll show you. If I click rotate here and um, rotate it on the X axis until it is down to 0, it's basically lying down flat. And the view that you get when you import into Storyboard should be something like this, more or less. So that's the view that you would be getting is of the logo lying down flat when we want it to be standing up. So that is why X is set to 90. So other than that, the location and how it's oriented in this 3D space, we have this orange dot that's in the middle of the object. This is the rotation point, the pivot point um, if we want to set up the logo to spin on an animation in Storyboard, it's going to want to know, okay, well, what do you want to rotate around? And we want to rotate it around, let's say, that orange point. If it's somewhere else where you're not expecting and you set up a, a rotation, it could spin away that maybe you weren't expecting and didn't like as much. So I set it to be more or less in the middle of the object. So all that information is going to be stored in your OBJ file. We'll go up to File and go to Export and we'll select wavefront.obj and we'll just put it on the desktop. I got a red line here because the file's already there. I'll just export it and overwrite what's there. And you are good. We are done with Blender and we will import it into Storyboard and take it from there. So here we are in Storyboard Designer and let's start a new application. We'll go File, New, New Storyboard Application and we will set something up to import that new 3D logo. So project name, 3D, we'll throw in our default workspace, hit Next, standard size 800 by 480, sounds good, and we'll just click Finish. Okay, so up here is our navigator view and our image folder as you can see, with this tab here is empty. We don't have the 3D file in there yet, so let's move over to the Finder. And on the desktop, we'll grab our OBJ file and we'll move it into that image directory. So it's in there. Go back to Storyboard. It should auto load, but you can click Refresh, and there it is. So in the application model, you've got your application on your first screen first layer, let's add a control. I'll right click, add control. Uh, we'll call this new control logo. We'll leave it in the top left at 0, 0. And the width can be the full size of the application view, 800 by 480. And the render extension, 3D model. Finish, great. So looking at that control logo, let's add the model file name. I'll just hit browse here go into our image directory, 3D logo. That's the one we want. Great. OK. And we've added it. So here we are in Storyboard with our 3D logo in the space. If you back up, you don't see anything. So what is going on here? What's the problem? There is no problem, really. All you need to do is understand what you're looking at and where you're looking from. Um, so your camera position is at 0, 0, 0. We talked about that before a little bit earlier, and the model position is also at 0, 0, 0. So essentially, the camera position is at the same spot as the model position. So it's kind of like trying to look at your own nose, if you think about it that way. It's sort of awkward to look at, but if you maybe change the position of the camera and change that to, say, 4, there. Uh, the camera is backed away from the model and now we can see it. That's good. If it was at 2, you can see it's getting bigger. 
one even bigger and zero where we started from, right? Right inside of the logo, essentially. For the model position, you could do the same thing. For model position Z, let's just put in negative four. And now that is back the model away from where the camera was. So you're getting the same view, but you're going about it in a different way. Again, let's just change that back to zero. And there's a feature um, that I'll show you in Storyboard where you've got your control, you've brought in your 3D model, you don't see anything. What you can do is you can right click on your control, go to resize, and at the very bottom, select reset 3D model. And there you have it. And the camera position has uh, backed away from the model itself. So now that we have that in place and can see it, we'll know what we're working with with these values here. Model position, x, y, z, as you may suspect, if you change these values, it will move around the screen. So let's move that to 1, goes to the right. If we change the value for y, say to negative 1, it will probably go down. Yes, it does. And for z, if we change that to 1, it gets closer. If we change it to negative 20, it gets way back there. So now we know how to position that model. I'll just reset these values back to zero. Now let's take a look at model orientation. This is basically assigning the angles that everything is at, zero, zero, and zero. So for the first one, let's put in 45, half of a right angle, and you can see that it's tilting forward like it's falling over. If you put in negative 45, it's like it's falling backwards. Easy enough. Switch that back to zero. Uh, now let's look at theta. If we change that to a 45 degree angle, it spins coming out at you. All right. And if you change that to a negative, it spins the other way. Well, let's make that even greater an angle. So negative 120. Now it's spun so far around that you're seeing it from behind. So that's also interesting. Seeing how the first two have rotated, you would probably expect this to rotate like so, which it does, like a cartwheel. Good. So now that we know how it rotates and how it positions itself, what we can do is we can assign variables to these different values, and then we can set up an animation, for example, and slide the logo around and do some more interesting things with it. So we'll take it from there. So I've gone ahead and added some images and set up an animation, added variables to our file, and I will show you that in a second. In our image palette here, you can see Nebula, which is a picture of outer space. If you're gonna animate your logo, it might as well be flying through space. That's how I feel. And if we look at the logo here, um, the positions are more or less where we left them off, but you can see with these that I've added some variables to the position of the Z value and the angle for X and Y. So let's change angle X to 90 degrees. Now it's lying down, flying through space like Superman. And for the position, let's have it negative 30. So, out in the distance. I've set up an action to run an animation when you press um, on the logo. So there's that. And let's take a look at the animations here. Animation for the position of Z will go from negative 30, where we just put it, and it's going to end at zero, where it was when we started. And then the angle of X is going to go from 90 degrees, which is it lying down, to negative 360. If you remember, zero, it was standing up, and 360 is a complete rotation. So making it a negative means it's going to flip backwards as, as it goes. And um, we'll talk about angle Y in a second, but let's just run the animation as it is, so I'll just right-click here, select 
simulate. Do you wish to save the file? Yes. And we'll launch it. Now if you remember the action is set to press, so I will press the logo and it will fly at us. And it does that zero to or 90 degree to negative 360 degree backflip there. I'll run it again. So far to near and zero to 90 and the extra 360 going backwards. So pretty cool. Uh, now let's talk about angle Y here. Right now it's starting at zero and ending at zero, but we can edit that so it does a rotation as well. So let's do 360 degrees. Click OK. And now what it's going to do is spin while it flies at us. So we'll simulate again. Do you want to save? Yes. And we'll launch it. When we click it, it will fly at us. So from far to near, spinning and flipping. Pretty neat. We'll run that one more time. So that is how to animate your logo, a 3D file in outer space. Thanks for watching.